So has anyone ever told you to just stop worrying about something saying, hey, stop worrying. It's going to be okay. Has that advice ever helped you stop worrying or worry less? Chances are no, because we we all know that logically worrying isn't fun. It doesn't feel good, right? If it was just as simple as stopping, we'd do it. And there wouldn't be people like me, mental health professionals, to to help us with these things, right? So that's what I want to talk to you about today. Some ways to work with your worries. I'm Dr. Kit Slies, life coach and licensed psychologist, here to inspire perfectionists and anxious achievers to feel calm and confident while holding clear boundaries. If you are a perfectionist or an anxious achiever, you probably worry more than most people. Worrying might just be your default mode. I put myself in this category in some ways. I, I work with my perfectionism and my anxious achieving, but I find it's a dangerous question to ask myself to think about what percentage of the time do I spend worrying? Because that answer can feel disheartening and over overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. So what I want to do today is offer you some different ways to relate to your worries and approach them so that the worries feel less cumbersome and that yes, you might be able to reduce your worry, but the goal here isn't to stop worrying completely. Worrying serves a function for us. There's a reason that we keep doing it. So what I want to introduce to you today is, is there a way to engage with your worries so that doesn't cause you so much stress and anxiety, a place of acceptance with your worries rather than trying to battle it out, a battle that you're sure to lose if you try to just squash your worries. So the first thing that I'll talk about is a strategy called worry time. Have you ever noticed that like if you had a day where you're just busy, 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 go, 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 go. And you're like, wow, I didn't really worry a lot today. But then as soon as the busyness subsides, your brain just lights on fire. You might notice this like when you lie down for bed at night and you just find that your mind turns on to all these worries, right? So this would be a good, if this happens, if this is happening to you, worry time might be an effective strategy for you. I'm going to give a caveat about worry time as well. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work for everybody and it can sometimes make things worse. So I'll tag on that caveat at the end. But the reason why our brain kind of turns on when we've been busy, busy, busy is because those worries are still there, right? This is an example of when somebody, in a way, they are effectively not worrying because their mind is so focused on all these other things. I've got to do this for the kids. I've got to do this for my boss or this for the business. And, da, 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 da. and so we're focusing on all these things, just get it done, get it, get, get it done, get it done. But meanwhile, in the background, we still have the worries about all the things that we need to do or should to do. And those, those are dangerous words. Also, the shoulds, shooting all over yourself is not a healthy thing. But so the mind turning on and going through that, that going into the hamster wheel mode is an example of when worry time might be effective. And what worry time is, is intentionally taking some time to worry and allowing yourself to worry. Uh, d don't do it right before bed is that is one of the tricks with it. So you want to do it Maybe as a, as a transition at the end of the your working day before you come home or when you get home, you could do it in the morning. Um, but allowing yourself a small space to just worry. I think that writing down your worries can be more helpful than just thinking about them if you don't have a space to write them down or, or you don't like the idea of writing and it's not just your way of processing. Saying them out loud is also a good way to do it, finding some privacy and just speaking them out loud. And then with that worry time specifically, take a little bit of time to evaluate your worries. Are these worries that you can do something about? If so, go ahead and plan it out. What, what are you going to do? Put it in your calendar. Or do it right then and there if you can. It's like, oh yeah, I remember to do this thing. It's gonna take me two seconds to do it. Go ahead and do it. Putting it in a calendar or writing it down is 
also a good thing so that it's not floating around up here. You know you have it scheduled. So when it comes into your brain later, because it will, right? It's like, oh, no, no, that's in my calendar. It's on my list. I'm not going to forget about it. I know it will get done, right? So there's worries that you can do something about. And then there's worries that you can't do anything about. And those are harder, right? Because those are the ones we just have to practice letting go of, the ones we don't have control over. And the thing about worry time is that the way you get to work with those worries is just by reminding yourself like, okay, I can't worry about this thing enough to change it or do anything about. I'll let myself worry about it. Maybe entertain for yourself. Like why, why does it cause so much worry or anxiety for you? Is it something, is the fear behind it realistic or is it something you're blowing out of proportion? right? Are you afraid there's going to be some major consequence of the, about this thing that hasn't happened and isn't likely to happen? You get to remind yourself of that. You remind yourself of how you deal with a thing if it did happen. Okay, that's what I want you to do in the worry time, right? Just let yourself kind of go through the things. Give yourself a little bit of space to do that so that your brain doesn't turn on later. If your brain does still turn on later, you get to remind yourself, nope, I've already worried about all of these things. And then you would delay worry till your next scheduled worry time. So that is one strategy. The caveat for that worry time strategy is that some folks, um, it's hard for them to come off of, of the worry train for the worry time. So if you think that you might be one of those, then start with just a really um, small dose of it, a couple of minutes and see if you're able to rein it back in after four or five minutes of worrying. If you find that you're not able to rein it back in and you're just going off onto all the worst case scenarios and things like that, that strategy might not be for you. It might be good to talk to a mental health professional about that one um, so that you can get to a point so that strategy is helpful for you. So that's worry time. The other thing that I want to talk to you about today, as far as your worries are concerned, rather than just stopping them, is to explore them a little bit. Think about for you, what are, how do your worries benefit you? What's the function of your worries? Like, why do you worry? Again, we all wor worry for a reason. Are we worrying about things that are important to us? Is that our, our brain's way of giving us an indicator of this, hey, this thing is really important to you, don't forget about it. And we get to just honor that that's, hey, this is something that's really valuable to me. I'm going to make sure that I don't forget about it. Does worrying cause you to plan? And there's some limited benefit to planning, right? If we're planning so much that it's taking the fun out of everything and that when our plans go wrong, that our day is ruined, then we have lost the benefit of planning, right? But worry might serve you still. Those plans, planning might benefit you at some times. So question is like, okay, how much worry do I really need to do to be able to plan this to a good enough point where I can still have fun with this thing that I want, want to be perfect, but be okay with it not being perfect? Think about, think about your worries about um, how they benefit you, but also how it causes you stress and how how it harms you and the thing about this is that you want to try to understand where your worries come from so that you're not just dismissing your worries because when even if we say to ourselves like hey just stop worrying that can backfire for us even when we are able to stop worrying as our example for the worry time showed us that even when we're not worrying, sometimes those worries are sitting in the background and they come out bigger and stronger than they were before. So just by exploring your worries a little bit, what are, what's the benefit of worrying? What's the drawback of worrying? It just helps you give a little bit of a different relationship with your worries. They're not this black and white thing. They're this gray area, right? There's this gray area that sometimes helps you sometimes in some ways. And in other ways, it causes you stress and makes your life hard. And how can you find a little bit more of a middle ground with your worries? So the last thing that I'll talk to you about today when it comes to worries is just some notions about thoughts in general, because that's what worries are. They are thoughts that we are thinking in our head. And again, the reason why, hey, don't worry doesn't work is because many of our thoughts aren't intentional 
conscious things. There, there are these automatic things that come up for us. And it's true that a lot of our thoughts are important. A lot of our thoughts are good. They help us to remember things. They remind us of, hey, this thing is dangerous. Don't do this. Hey, remember to do this thing that's healthy for you. We like running. Let's remember to do that. Whatever the thing is, right? A lot of our thoughts are helpful. But the thing about our thoughts, especially the automatic ones, is that just because we're having the thought doesn't mean that this thing is true. Our thoughts are not always true, but because it's a constant thing for us, our thoughts are pretty constant. We sometimes forget that like, hey, this isn't all of reality, right? We can take them for granted. So that's the last thing that I want you to think about today when it comes to your worries is just because you have this script, this sort of endless feed of things that are coming out that you're thinking about, the hamster wheel, the overthinking, right? You don't have to accept every thought to be true. You get to be the ultimate decider of, hey, is this a thought that I want to give some time and energy to and see its value, see its truth? Or is this just a thought Maybe this is the protector part of me. It's trying to protect me to, hey, don't forget this thing. Otherwise, bad things are going to happen. Okay, thank you, this protector part of me for trying to help me. And then I'm going to let go of that one. Because I don't actually need protection from this thing. This, this bad consequence is not happening in the present moment. So I'm good for now. Thanks so much. So those are my thoughts for you today on how to work with your worries rather than just trying to stop them. Again, just trying to allow them in some ways and be curious about them and grateful for the parts that serve you, letting go of the parts that don't, trying to have a more lighthearted approach with your worries. I hope that you found this helpful and I'll see you next time. Bye.